Welcome back and thank you very much indeed uh, to TV3 New Day. The Daily Guide this morning, the headlines, uh, NDC set up SWAT. Sam George Lied says IOS West Wugon report. And the two force chief killer plant settling in Burkina. I am above politics, Asante Hine. Third, Takradi uh, kidnapper lands and EC exposes NDC lies. The Daily Graphic, government abrogates Aquetia mine contract. President leaves <clears throat> for 74th UN General Assembly. Customs impounds smuggled wax prints. The BNFT, record low inflation won't cut policy rate. Digitization of agri sector left to donors with annual flows of 175 million euros. Ghana, Ivory Coast to introduce cocoa production ceiling. And the final newspaper, cabinet approves 274.2 million euros for construction of a new health project of new health projects and uh, 20 million dollars for rehabilitation of old health projects coming to provide basic needs of agribloshi and old fadama according to dr bomb yeah that's another promise there and 91.2 of free shs candidates secured schools gcb bank supports 30 medical students abroad my guest this morning Dr. Ahmed Chinapo, he is a, a senior lecturer at the University of Education in Winneba. Also, Mr. George AEC is the National Communications Director of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO. And Mr. Uh, Osei Kwame Griffiths is the head of IT of the biggest opposition party, the NDC. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. How's the Friday going? <clears throat> so far, so good. <laughs> Okay, let's start from the I also West will gone. Uh, the, the reports which the NDC called for so many times and many other CSOs. Uh, it's finally here. Government has issued a white paper on it. And the, the talk in the streets is that, look, there are too many things that the government shut down, that the government rejected, even though the commission was constituted by eminent Ghanaians who, uh, you know, have etched their names within their various fields. So you see, I'll start with you on this one. Why is government flagging everything, nearly everything, in the report? Oh, thank you, uh, Johnny Hughes. Uh, let me say good morning to our viewers, hmm. and then good morning to my colleagues. Uh, yeah, government, you know, per the Constitution, uh, you know, the government is supposed to, Article 278, uh, government is to set up a commission of inquiry, uh, which it rightly did. And then when findings are made, the same constitution uh, says in some parts, when uh, uh, conclusions are made, there are some reasonings that must be given or adduced for such conclusions that have been made. Mm -hmm. And so when it's so done, mm -hmm. then the government comes to issue a white paper within six months of okay. the presentation mm -hmm. uh, of the report. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we know that the commissions of inquiries are grounded on uh, Act uh, 1964, Act 250, uh, mm. which has been aptly captured in the Constitution again, Article 278, 9, 280, mm. 81, and then A3. So they all give reasoning for that. Okay. And then when it's done, you know, these, when the findings are made, uh, it is not binding on government to you know, accept and implement uh, ipso facto, right? And so when it so happens, then government will take a look at it and say, okay, I agree with you on this. Uh, I take notice of these points okay. that you want us to get. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I disagree or reject some of the contents mm -hmm. uh, on the finding based on certain reasoning. You okay. must adduce reasoning for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, that's exactly what the government uh, has done. And we have uh, case precedents. You know, we, we, we remember the Jam Affair Committee mm -hmm. uh, of 20. Uh, 20, 2006? Yeah, 2014, 2014 so 15 there. But then uh, Justice Babekbe committee mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. you know and the adekuka uh, football player player transfer matters right. you know and so when 
the reports were brought. Mm -hmm. uh, the then government, the committee or commission had indicted Adekoka mm -hmm. that he was uh, explicitly involved in player transfer things. Mm -hmm. But the white paper issue disagreed with the committee. Mm -hmm. And then Jamafe, we know Edu Asari, and then of course mm -hmm. uh, my good friend and senior brother, Mr. Uh, Free Anker. Right. And then the position of government. And mm -hmm. preceding that too, you remember uh, allegations were made against some senior government officials in 1999 there about. Mm -hmm. uh, Kwame Pepra, uh, Alaji, Ibrahim Mahama, mm -hmm. and co. on mm -hmm. certain financial matters. Right. A committee was set up, or a commission of inquiry was set up by Jerry Rawlings. Mm -hmm. The findings uh, uh, indicted these individuals, mm -hmm. but the then government issued a white paper disagreeing with the findings. Okay, so there are case precedents. And so this is not the first time it's happened. But this government says, okay, uh, we take notice of some of them. Mm -hmm. uh, some we disagree, especially a case in point. Uh, that yesterday and saw your uh, news reader Alfred mm -hmm. uh, speaking to some George about right. uh, was the Sulemana right. versus some George exactly. uh, issue. Uh, it states especially that you know because there was a provocation mm. uh, which elicited that response. Mm. Uh, the government or white paper finds it difficult to say that, you know, uh, that individual should be prosecuted. Mm. You get it? And so uh, it posted that. People disagree. If you disagree, uh, I believe you still have the reprieves of the law mm. to say it's criminal conduct by slapping. Mm. And, and the fact that I provoke you shouldn't elicit a mm. slap or something. Mm. That is the individual's opinion. But the white paper feels uh, that is what we ought to take. We shouldn't allow people to go provoking a people, especially mm. under the circumstance, okay? The, the committee's report said, you know, Sam George's action was inappropriate, okay? Given the circumstance under which uh, uh, he, you know, provoked that individual, mm. okay? It could have even led to his death. You know, they said something like that. And so, uh, um, Going forward, I think we need to look at it carefully. That's mm -hmm. why government said we cannot uh, accept that prosecution. Then, a very interesting aspect that government has accepted, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, the, that uh, Ernest Akumia right. be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. uh, government has accepted that. So it uh, takes for, note. It didn't no, say no, 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 it, no, no, no. The Akumia one, mm. you know, is, is accepted. That may, may, I, may, I re, may I read? Yeah. To, may yeah. I read to you? It says uh, this is uh, six three individual liabilities, yeah. and Good. that's uh, A. It says the government takes note okay. of the commission's recommendation that Mr. Ernest Akumia, alias Double, uh, must be prosecuted for the okay. unauthorized possession of firearms okay. under subsection 1 of section 60, uh, section 192 of the Criminal Offenses Act 1960 at 29, and refers that recommendation to the Criminal Investigation Department of the Ghana Police Service for further investigation. Thank you. Thank you. So, so it is not sacrosanct that government has said that. But once it's referred to the CID, you know, a prosecution could take place. It okay. could. It could take place. Probability <laughs> that it may not also it take may place. Not. Mm. Another one that the government's white paper uh, spoke about is, is the structure of the SWAT mm. team right. itself. You know, right. uh, the committee uh, said uh, they feel there's some overlapping responsibilities. Exactly. It's not well structured. So the and structure all that. of command. Yeah, the structure of command and co. Cool. But government feels no, it is, you know. It so, has, so for you, government <laughs> has done nothing wrong at all. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm saying that, mm. you know, no, it's within the remit of, of the law okay. that government can accept take notice or reject some okay. of them. Thank but you. that is not to say mm. that government disrespects the individuals. The individuals that were on the committee, mm. this, as, as you rightly said, are distinguished uh, individuals, uh, uh, citizens of this country. Who I, I'm, sure, I'm sure you've heard the, some of the voices on the streets and the reactions yeah. to yeah. There's the government white paper, even yeah. though it's less than 48 hours. Yeah. Is government satisfied with the narrative on the streets that people say, look, you are clearing people one more time, oh. and this is this is this is not good. What do oh, you say? No, no, no. Uh, for political reasoning, you know, sometimes if, if the ordinary people are saying we disagree with you on certain things, then it behoves on us government to come in and explain okay. the basis for accepting, rejecting, or taking notice of some of those. Right. So we have, as communicators, we have a lot of work to do. I hear you. Osei Kwame, step in for me. This is what government says. It says, look, the committee has done a great job, uh, but we have taken note of some of their recommendations. Some of them we uphold. Some of them we disagree. 
What, what does the NDC think? Uh, is the government on the right path? First of all, I would agree with the government that the committee has done a fantastic job mm -hmm. and needs to be commended. However, if you look at the, the genesis of the, you know, these issues, mm -hmm. you know, you would realize that um, the government does not seem to seriously want to address the issue that is at stake. How so? You set and up a I, commission. I, you set up a commission. Mm. Before the commission can even submit a report, you are passing a law that would ban uh, vigilantism. When mm. well-meaning Ghanaians voiced out that, why don't you wait? Mm. Let the commission report come out. And when the commission report comes out, mm. then based on their findings, it could enrich you know, the, the bill that you sent to parliament. Right. Mm. You know, right from the get-go, government did not listen to that fact that some, several occasions where the president himself said he had not read the report after it mm. was submitted to him mm. several times. Now, when you come to the, the report itself, mm -hmm. if you look at the report, and uh, it talks about very serious things that we need to which, be concerned which, about. Which space, which space are you referring to so we could... It the, 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 in terms of the, the, the structure of the security structure, setup, okay, the fact okay. that uh, they recommended uh, mm. a, more or less a central control right. a central for command. Command for, uh, for, the, uh, for the processing, receiving and processing of intelligence. Okay. I served in the military, mm. you, you know, not here, right. in, the, in the United States. And I can tell you for a fact that when it comes to the military, there's a reason why their life is so regimented. Mm. Everything, and I remember very well some of the things that uh, uh, some of our friends, you know, we used to tease them that, okay, why don't you have, you know, the proper attire on? Since mm. the military did it, issue it to me. So mm. their life is so regimented. Mm. It's because you have in the hands of soldiers the power to do so much damage. Mm if they don't have the discipline that goes along with it. So it is important that you don't give somebody two, three weeks training and then put a weapon in his hands. And put a weapon in his mm. hands. The report clearly s states that there was a team on the ground mm. which was in charge right. of operations right. on the ground. There's a claim that some intelligence was received. Mm. Another team was dispatched. There's a command structure on the field. At that point, whoever was in charge of security at was was in was supposed to be in charge of everything that is related to security. Including the ad additional team that came. Es exactly. Has to come under his command. If I'm in charge of a unit, in charge of a unit under uh, taking an operation somewhere, mm. then all of a sudden you see another unit coming in from a different sec uh, different unit mm. in, a, in the armed forces. Mm. And they're taking us, more or less, having received an intelligence and going into, to the point of going far to somebody's house. Mm. I think that is inappropriate. If, if, if the logic you're selling to me is, is anything to go by, for example, the team on the ground could be under the instruction of an, a chief inspector. Then a DSP, who is twice higher in rank, <laughs> comes up. Does the DSP fall under the instruction of the chief inspector? Whoever is in charge of that operation that day is in, is in charge of everything that happens on the ground. But the DSP and you can can, ask cannot, any cannot bow to the dictates so of the chief inspector. So you don't send a USP to, DSP to go, into, uh, 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 to go into a situation where you have a chief inspector in charge of the operations. However, mm. even informing them, because they claimed, they, they indicated that they were not even aware of the, you know, the coming in of the, mm. uh, the, the SWAT units. Can I supply small information so that officer it, goes on? Small information. Okay. Johnny, 30 uh, seconds. they had an intel that a place closer to the polling or election, the mm. DSP, sorry, the inspector was mm. in charge of election areas. Okay. Then there's an intel that arms or individuals are massing up somewhere okay. and something dangerous is likely to so, happen. So they couldn't, so have, they couldn't have asked the, the man on the ground to verify that claim? Uh, was the place within the jurisdiction of elections 
you know, EC commissioner had said there was no violence at any okay. polling station. Okay, thank you. Mr. Griffith. If I may continue, Sorry, because yes. I'm coming from uh, somebody who has served in the military okay. and actually deployed to a war zone. Mm. If I have an operation, mm. and I was in Iraq, I am sent to Fallujah mm. with the responsibility to more or less secure a facility in Fallujah. Mm. And I go in there with my men. Everything that happens in Fallujah at that unit, at, at that time, mm. I should be in charge of that. You should be answerable. Yes. Now, you are saying that there was an intelligence that were arms in a particular house. In that. First of all, the report even did not talk about <laughs> the finding of mm. any arms anywhere. Mm. And I believe that the force with which they went into the house, if there were arms, they could have retrieved it, which they didn't. So your, it, po your point is, bottom line, that the, the commission is hiding something? Or? No, the commission is not hiding anything. The commission has done a fantastic job. Okay. But it looks as if the m most important parts of the commission report, government has rejected that. Even including an assault on an honorable member of parliament, mm. you are saying that. Where did the government become responsible for mm. defending people who have been accused of crime? Mm. You are saying that the report is justifying the, 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 the crime. It's as it, it, it was an act of defense. How was that an act of defense? Did he, he was provoked. So provocation is justified, it becomes a justified reason for committing a crime in this country. That is not the case. Mm. That is not the case. There's nowhere in our laws that it say that when you are provo mm. provocation, provocation leads to it. In, in any case, okay. the report does not say that the man was justified in any way. Okay. Okay. Nowhere in the 74-page report does it say the man was justified in committing mm. the crime. Mm. Hmm. <sighs> okay, look, the, the issues keep popping up, and, and Mr. Griffith has raised a very key concern about uh, who controls what? Exactly what the the commission's report uh, seems to have says. Well, let's harmonise at least the command structure, so we know who is in charge of what, when, and how. What do you say? Well, I think uh, his suggestion, and uh, based on his experience mm -hmm. and situated within the context of what happened at Ayawa so West Wogan, mm -hmm. has more or less been addressed by the commission of inquiry. In fact, all the things that we are talking about, who is right, who is wrong, mm. that was the reason why a commission of inquiry was set. Mm. The commission of inquiry is an investigative body that is supposed to impartially, objectively, mm. look at what happened, mm. look at the different parties, get everybody, and come out with conclusions, recommendations and suggestions. Mm. And I can say without any equivocation that this commission has done an excellent job. In fact, they work within the time frame. Mm. And what is instructive is that if you look at the personalities that sat on the commission, mm -hmm. you're talking of Emma Short, Professor Harry Tabonsu, oh, yes. IGP, uh, uh, Achampon, and uh, the secretary. I mean, these are people of integrity and credibility. Mm. And I think they need to be commended for a good job done. Okay. That said, we are now moving to the next phase of this whole Ayawasu issue. Mm -hmm. The commission has submitted this report. And what is the response of government? In fact, are you happy with the, the, the response of government? It's not about being happy. It's not about being happy. And when I listened to my brother, you see, gave a litany of previous mm -hmm. commissions that have been what? That have been put in place. Mm -hmm. And the responses of government relative to the recommendations that have been what that have been put out mm -hmm. and i think there seems to be a certain i mean paradigm that paradigm has always been that governments before and even now mm -hmm. have always rejected what in my estimation are the most critical and important aspects of what the commission's job is supposed to be mm -hmm. because in the first place anytime there's a commission of inquiry mm -hmm. The opposition is always interested in getting people what? Reprimanded. Right. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm. In getting people reprimanded. Mm. And if you look at this particular issue, the bane of this whole call for inquiry have centered on two things. One, the slapping of uh, Sam George. George right. And two, 
perpetration of what? Violence. Violence, right. And if you look at these two... A possession of... Uh, uh, yes, yeah, perpetration of right. violence and all those things. But these are the critical ones which by the white people of government has been rejected. And mm. historically so, if you look at most of them, mm. you talk about German Fair Commission and all those things. I think the problem that we seem to be inching towards mm. is that by... I'm not in any way trying to rebuke government mm. for taking that position. Of course, it's in their right. Commissions of inquiry, their recommendations are not binding. Mm. Governments have any right to accept or reject, no matter what. But the danger is that it creates the, 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 the situation whereby the general populace seems to be losing confidence in commissions of inquiry. Because at the end of the day, if mm. you remember, when this commission of inquiry was set, mm. most people, especially those in opposition, will say, look, it's going to be the same old thing. The commission will come out with recommendations mm. and government will not accept it. Status quo again. The status quo again. Mm. So, if we go by that, mm. then if we are not careful, then commissions of inquiry tends to lose its essence. And I believe that the, 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 what we need to pick out of this whole investigation that has taken place, mm. it's not about whether somebody is prosecuted or not. In fact, if you take Mohamed Suleimana, for instance, mm. Mohamed Suleimana, he apologized during the... the right. <laughs> he apologized. Mm. So if he apologized and the commission is saying that, look, he needs to be criminally prosecuted, mm. and the, 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 the one who was offended in the mm. case of St. Mm. George says that, look, I'm not interested. The guy is remorseful. Let's move on. I think we should be interested in taking some cues okay. out of the recommendations that have been put across such that those cues must be helpful and inure to what? The determinant of such acts in future. Central to this is the, the command control. That is it. Uh, but government is rejecting that it. That would dovetail into electoral security. That is it. That is it. But government has rejected the recommendation that, that, for command control, no, which will have yeah, a ripple I, I, effect. Let, 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 let me, and even then, let me finish here. Mm. The point is this. Is it a genuine observation by the commission of inquiry based on their investigation? Mm. If it is, government probably will not publicly come out to accept it. Mm -hmm. But maybe, <laughs> inwardly, it will look at it. But I think the bedrock of all this is that what are the lessons that we are learning out of it? Mm -hmm. If at Ayawa Su West will go, and it's very critical, look, uh, uh, Johnny, yeah. as part of that, uh, the, 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 the commission's uh, investigations, mm -hmm. there's one aspect that has not been mentioned, that by that, the SWAT team went there to more or less put fear okay. in the electoral what? Uh, 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 public, right? Do you get what I'm saying? Based on whose call, we don't know yet. And 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 that and that there seems to be lack of discipline mm. on the part of what those men, mm. and as a result, DSP Azuga must be what reprimanded. Right. The interesting aspect of it is that government has accepted that portion and has referred DSP Azuga to what to the IGP for him to what to, be, to be do whatever. Mm. That is very important. But, but there are two strands to that, yes. Doc. One, the commission says, look at the process of recruiting people. That is so another that aspect. They get in by merit and, and not, not by action. Not by, so, now, if I lived in the barracks as well, my yeah. dad was a uniformed yeah. man. There was no way that you have people under command doing something and a superior officer calls them to order and they ignore him, and they go ahead doing what I have never seen that before. That is it. And, and so yeah. for a DSP, which is mm -hmm. equivalent to a captain, yeah. to to be poo pooed by yeah. people who perhaps may be just uh, privates or base NCOs or constables, that's dangerous. Of course, of course. And I think that that is where our interest and concentration should be. For me, as an ordinary Ghanaian, my interest is not about whether the NDC is right or the MPP is right but I'm interested in my security. Because in 2020, I'll be going to cast my vote. Right. So when I go to cast my vote, I do not want a repetition of Ayawaso West Wagon. In the sense that, if you have men who are mm. welding arms, mm. and they come to a place that they are not disciplined, okay. they do not take instructions from their commander, mm -hmm. that can be very, very dangerous. So I think that as a country, we need to sit down, ponder mm. over this whole uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, this whole report. Mm. I've had the opportunity of looking through it. And look, Johnny, the interesting thing about what happened was mm. most of the things that were being investigated by this commission mm. were captured on tape. Okay. So you and I had the opportunity of what? Witnessing it. 
We okay. saw it on TV. Mm. We saw Sam George, Sam George being slapped. Right. We saw this, uh, I mean, this uh, SWAT team or whatever, the mm. way they conducted themselves. Mm. There's nobody who will sit there and say that, look, these guys conducted themselves in the right way. Of course, it might not come from government. It could be the case that the person who has the responsibility, oversight responsibility, did not do his job well. So we need to make sure that what this does not happen again. How so come, to, how come, how come yeah. the committee did the full, full work and we still do not know who made the call to get the SWAT out? Because if the SWAT is working under the direction of the national security and the president is the boss of the national security committee, yeah. then we should know who, who, who made the call for the SWAT to come out. Was it with the express permission of the president? Nobody has said that. And the, the report doesn't say that. So in future... We could be at a polling station and another team parading themselves as SWAT could just pop up, disrupt the whole process like the committee said, and go away. Of course. I mean, the, the committee, in as much as, as we said, have done a good job. I mean, they can't, they can't get everything. Mm. It could be that, that portion of it, uh, they've not been able to stumble on that information. But the most important thing is that what happened at Ayos West Wagon should not repeat itself again. George, what let, let, let me come to you before I come to Mr. Griffiths finally. So the conversation again on the streets is that this whole white paper and rejection of certain portions of the commission's report may not necessarily engender confidence, as Doc says. And that will mean that political parties like the NDC, as they've indicated in, in not so long ago, would want to take their security into their own hands. And that is not good for us. Remember that in 2016, uh, police uh, escorts were provided for political parties, and the two major political parties actually <laughs> rejected it. So now we're going to 2020. They do not know who made the call to get the SWAT in there to come and disrupt what was already there. The government is rejecting the recommendation to That's harmonize, yes, to, to harmonize yeah. the command control. And now parties will say, okay, so let's protect ourselves because we can't trust these people. What do you say? Yeah, government's rejection is saying that the, the, the command control structure is already there. Mm. That's what they say. So it's not something new that we are going to... But, but if it's uh, already there, you shouldn't again. be having what and you saw. And you're a bias boy. Uh, hold on, said, hold on. Said. <laughs> so if, if it already exists yeah. and it is functional as it should be, yeah. without the overlapping functions yeah. as you want us to believe, yeah. then we shouldn't have had what happened at Ayahu's West Walker. Yeah, uh, yeah, but where, where well, DSP good. looks helpless to, I want to in the middle, <laughs> middle you say you are of an operation, boy, yes. and he is a military right, man. Right. That's the process of court martial mm. within the ranks of the force. Mm. So if you disobey instruction or command from your superior officer, there's a way to deal with you in barracks. Court, court martial <laughs> is restricted to the military. <laughs> yes. The police could yes. be interdicted <laughs> and, and, and brought no, no, back. They are, they we have seen that before. Yeah, you said barracks, that's why I use court martial. Mm. You get uh, military, I assume right. you're a military right. barracks boy. So these, there are internal structures to deal with disobedient subordinate officers, okay, within the uh, structure mm. of either the police, the military, or national security. Okay, so that's important. And the, to the question uh, you raised, very critical. But fortunately for all of us, we've made moves to get uh, political parties to disband their militia groups, right? Uh, Professor Henry Tomensa Bonsu thinks we should use militia instead of the vigilantes mm. that uh, we are using. And the committee's report uh, captured it explicitly that the word shouldn't be vigilantes, but mm. it should be militia, right? And so because we've made strides on that score. You have, you have not made strides. The last time we put you both in the room, <laughs> you, you didn't bring any, you didn't bring us any answers. No, so law, the, the, the president last, decided The last time we put no, you in the room, yes, you didn't the president has taken progress. a decision that mm -hmm. let's make laws to govern that. Okay? And so, um, uh, a bill was sent to parliament. Okay? Uh, aren't there so, laws already that criminalize no, but, but this the is activities? an issue specific, yes, an issue specific okay. about these vigilantes and then political violence and all that. Okay. So to assure the Ghanaian people going forward, you get it? So these are the ways that, one, we don't permit political parties to have their own insecurities to misconduct the themselves. Is not you know, no, no. And that was not established. No, no, he, he asked something oh, okay. that right. is it not going to give room for 
political party, or special opposition okay, parties. Okay. Yes, to that's the question. Yes, yes, yes. To begin to mistrust state uh, security apparatus mm -hmm. and then use their own right. thing. You get it. So, so uh, we, we, it is, you know, there's the danger mm -hmm. that I don't think is going to be uh, something that people are going to mistrust uh, the structures and co. And, and the committee also stated categorically that, you know, the SWAT existed before this government, right? right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then one thing that I thought the committee also didn't actually answer, somebody shots in his own home was somebody killed in his own as mm. as some george mm. wanted the whole world to believe mm. you get it and that wasn't established so going for less or uh not doubt the uh, uh commission's reports okay? okay though government has rejected some mm. it's taking notice of some and then accepted wholly some of the recommendations and it's the way to move okay forward. mr griffith so the, i'll put the same question to you your party has consistently insisted that the last uh, Congress that you had at the trade fair, I saw gentlemen in red tops with camo downs and all of that. I think Coca called them ushers because <laughs> I asked them, they were, these are very well built ushers who could be distributing water to the rest of the world. But flowing out from this, does it make the NDC want to take its own security into their hands and, and knowing the consequences of thereof? Well, the NDC is a law-abiding abiding party, and uh, we, we believe strongly that there are good enough men and women in uniform mm. to, to ensure our security in this country. Okay. Uh, we also are concerned about the consistent interference in the way they do their work, mm. you know which seems to be coming from uh, the center of government. Mm -hmm. So to, be, to, to, to say here that, like you said, Adekoko said, we have people, all sorts of people in the party. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we don't have people who would be taking arms, you know, similar to what happened. And, and I want to say this, mm -hmm. repeat what I said, that the people who were in uniform mm -hmm with rifles in their hands, okay. shouldn't have had those rifles in their hands in the first place because they didn't have the required training and discipline to, to do that. Okay. You understand? Mm. Uh -huh. so, so guns in wrong so, hands. Yes, it, seriously in wrong hands. Now, let me pick up from where my brother left off, that nobody went into somebody's house and shot him, no. But there are rules of engagement in the military. Mm. You do <coughs> not, you do not, the first rule is don't point a weapon at anything you don't intend to kill. Okay. And the reason why it is so is that when a weapon is pointed at you, mm. the second law says you have, if anybody has the opportunity, the capability, and the intent mm. to use deadly force on you, you have the right to, to use deadly force. A soldier must be guarded by this. Mm. Any military person must be guarded by this. And I cite several, I will cite several examples mm -hmm. where you have several stories. The USS School in the United States, where somebody is on watch, there's an approaching vessel. There was no clear evidence that there was imminent danger. Mm -hmm. So he leaves the person. You see, it's several examples. In this case, in this case, why was the rifle discharged in the first place? When you went and met people who did not ha were not armed, they they were no. told they were they were warning yes. shots. Yes. They were yes. warning shots from the from the house, from the house that yeah. it was part of and then it was directed at the the it was directed at the, a, a shot from the house. Okay. That's what they said. And then it was directed at and the that elicited team. the response, but the commission commission felt that the response was inappropriate. Mm. Yeah, it was over the board. Yeah. Totally over the board, to the extent that mm. somebody who was not armed was shot. That is the point I've tried yeah, to make. Right. Okay. Y you understand so what I'm saying? So it was needless. It was needless. I was, I remember very well on our way, uh, I was on a ship, a guided missile destroyer, okay. at the back of uh, uh, Iran. Okay. And they had these uh, anti-aircrafts. Okay. Then they lowered their, their, the barrels of the gun okay. to the ship. Mm -hmm. That was declaration of war. Oh. But you see, the, the captain called what we call general quarters okay. to put you on alert. Mm -hmm. But we didn't engage. We never. You understand? 
There are ways a soldier with a weapon must be trained well enough to know when to discharge. Okay. You don't give somebody two, three weeks training mm. and put such power in his hands because he doesn't have the discipline mm. to know when to stop. Okay. When the command says, you know what, uh, abrogate, we are, we are going back you know, to the barracks. Mm. You, you understand what I'm saying? And that, to, to me, is very fundamental to what happened at Iowa's war. Okay, thank and you. The government has taken notice. Join us. Uh, well, <laughs> government, government has taken <laughs> notice. <laughs> they, that. They, they, I, I think that the commission's report, and yeah. Doc and I were, were having a conversation about two, three weeks ago about how people got into, you know, uh, 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 uniformed, uh, you know, our services. And we're, we're, ask, we're talking about it sincerely. Uh, the protocol list, I hope they stop. But the NDC has been on a back and forth with the Electoral Commission. And um, there's a response from the Electoral Commission dated 19th, September 2019. It says, uh, EC responds to NDC allegations. I read portions of it to you. The Electoral Commission has noted with concern a number of allegations made by the leadership of the NDC in sections of the media, including social media, on the ongoing exhibition of voters register. The Commission believes that the allegations were calculated and targeted at creating an erroneous impression about the EC and causing disaffection between its leadership and the general public. Like all other political parties, the EC would have expected the NDC to use dialogue channels open and available or other established lines of uh, communication to address these concerns. It is unfortunate that the NDC continues to use medium of media to raise concerns which can easily be resolved after deliberations with the Electoral Commission. The allegations range from purported missing names in the provisional voters register as well as the provision of copies of the register to political parties among others. The NDC has on various platforms accused the issue of flaws in the provisional voters register and it is important to emphasize that the essence of the exhibition exercise to afford all registered voters the opportunity to check and verify their names and particulars and to make corrections to mistakes on their details. That's what the Electoral Commission says. My first question is, what would necessitate the NDC to, to jab the EC in public? Uh, why? First of all, let me say that this letter coming from the EC is very unfortunate. Why so? Yes. And I have in my hands, right? you know, I have, I have in my hands here letters we wrote requesting the register. Okay. This was written on the 9th of the EC sent us a letter asking us to bring a hard drive. Okay. A hard drive on the of capacity two terabyte. Okay. On the 9th of September. Okay. For soft copy of the register. Okay. You, and you are speaking as head of IT of, yes. of the industry. Yes, okay. I drafted a letter and I said, please find accompanying this letter. I was in, I, initially, I was tempted to send a hard drive. I said, no, let me put it on paper. Please find accompanying this letter, a hard drive of capacity two terabytes for a copy of the provisional reg uh, voters register. Mm. This here is stamped received by the electoral commission. Okay, right. On the 9th of September. Right. <laughs> on the 10th, when the exercise began, okay. We went there telling them that it has never happened in the history of this country that exhibition has begun and we don't have a copy as a political party, a copy of the register. Right. As a matter of procedure. They failed to give us a copy of the register. On the 11th... Even, that, that's even after, after you had given them your, the your hard, drive. hard drive. Okay. On the 11th, we went there in the morning hmm. asking for a copy of the register. They failed. So I did another letter. I said, please note, and this is on the 11th of September. Okay. So I don't know what the EC means by we didn't engage them. Okay. It says, please note that we are yet to receive a copy of the provisional register, though exhibition is ongoing. Mm. You will agree with me that this will make it difficult for our agents to effectively monitor the exercise. Mm. It is my plea that you send us the provisional register immediately to enable us and monitor the exercise. This what is, was the easiest response? This is none of them were responded to. Okay. Stamp received by the confidential registry of the Electoral Commission. Electoral Commission. Okay. Now, again, on the twelfth, we wrote not only a letter demanding the the copy of the register, 
we wrote cataloging all the issues on the ground mm. and requested a meeting with the EC. We went to the office of the director of operations. Mm. We couldn't find him. We left the letter with, uh, with his secretary. Mm. With his secretary. So I do not understand what the EC means by, and you can judge from yourself, mm. from the letters that I have put before you, stamp mm. received from the, from the uh, EC. Electoral Commission. Okay. But one thing is worth noting here. Mm. The EC has actually stated here that they have three months, mm. yeah. three months, yeah. to provide us with a copy of the, the provisional register. register. Mm. That is not true. And I'll tell you why. The CI 91 states that they have three months to compile the provisional register. Okay. Once you move into exhibition, you have moved away from the provisional register. You are beginning to finalize the register okay. because issues are going to be dealt with. Right. And it says that after mm. you have compiled the provisional register, mm. you give copies to political parties. It states in there clearly. Mm. Otherwise, why will we, how will we be able to monitor the, 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 the exercise? In any case, mm. the EC has responded saying that it has three months and therefore is not under any pressure to give us the provisional register until September, end of September. The chief executive of the opposition New Patriotic Party mm. was on Asempa FM saying that they have a, a soft copy of the register. And, and so that, do you have, do you have the register? I don't get what he means by chief as the opposition. I, well, I have the voice here. Is that the chairman the, or the, 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 <laughs> no, the general secretary no, of the party. Okay. I have the voice okay. here. If okay. you want to listen okay. to it, no, so, I, I will so, let you so, listen. So let me get from you. So you see, does your party have the register? Well, as of now, I'm not clothed with that okay. information. Okay. Okay. And, 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 and let me... Once the not given quickly, wrap up for Mr. Griffin. Let me... Let me... Let me... Let me say here that... Okay, you, you are saying that uh, the General Secretary John Boudou was on radio. I have the voice saying, here. Okay, okay. saying that. But say? let's yes. progress. And what he said was that the NDC should more or less insinuating that the NDC should not be expecting a hard copy of the register. That's not what we, we're expecting. No. We send a hard drive. Because they say that if you... He said that if you print the register, it will fill up the studios of As Empire FM. Therefore, they were given only a soft copy. Okay. The point we are making is that as we speak to you now, mm. today is marks the end of the exhibition. Mm. We still do not have the soft copy of the register. And per the letter I wrote on the 9th, okay. it states here that please find, accompany this letter, a hard drive with capacity 2 terabytes. So, so they, ha they have your hard drive? They have a hard drive since the 9th. Since the 9th. And, they have a, and we have been there daily requesting the copy of the register. It is very clear that you know there's something going on here something, there, there like, something response, like what something like what well whatever is happening between the the the, <laughs> the electoral commission and the new patriotic party oh. you know for them to have a copy of the the register okay a soft copy of the register which mm. is what we asked for mm. and i have a letter to to to, to, to prove to, that to, we asked for a soft mm. copy and we still haven't received you, you it. think that the uh, ec is in bed with the the government well, well it is very obvious okay that the ec is not being fair okay all right, thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to you, gentlemen, Doc. Uh, but Bella is standing by. She's got a few messages on WhatsApp. Hello, well, Bella. Yes, I do. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Enjoying the discussion. But it looks like conversation is rife on government's rejection of the meal short, um, you know, Commission of Inquiries recommendation. So government rejecting almost every finding is an indication that we have a bigger challenge going forward. And that's Joseph from Bolga. Now, good morning. I can assure you that there'll be a repetition of what happened at Ayawa so in 2020. We pray it doesn't happen. Uh, but he says, as was indicated by one of the SWAT team members, that 2020 will see more of such violence. That's Kojo from Peki. Now, good morning, TV3. My regards to your panelists, especially Dr. Jinapo, who is a neutral panelist. However, mm -hmm. Dr. Jinapo's impartiality has started fading um, a way of late. So he has to do something about it. <laughs> I used to admire his analysis, but now, Dr. Jinapo, maybe you need to do something about it. Please do. That's Abdul from Tamale. Good morning, Johnny. It's fading to darkness or into light. I don't even know which is which, but... <laughs> 
He'll work on it, don't worry. Now, good morning, Johnny. Can Jetta George, Honorable, sue the guy who assaulted him after he provoked him to do the same? Uh, must government say yes or no before one pursues justice? I don't get it. Please help. This is from Efa Isaac, senior journalist at Trima in Wabieja. North constituency. I don't know what Congratulations. that is. Uh, oh, I did well, right? So it is in Wabiaja, right? Okay. Now, hi, Johnny. If the government fully justifies the cost of the slap as a result of provocation, then I do believe the state has no case to prosecute the suspected Kaswa police killers. As from his side of the story, he even shot the policeman as a result of provocation. <sighs> Nanaya hmm. from Pokwasi. Interesting comment. Um, Johnny, good morning. Hmm. I'm really sad about the government's white paper. Uh, the president has done it by clearing other criminals. John Jackson from Oyarefa. Do you have evidence, by the way? Now, being a public sector worker, it saddens me to know that the tax I pay is simply misappropriated with impunity. How on earth will you set up a committee to investigate such an unfortunate incident at Ayawaso, pay panelists for work done, then you suddenly throw away their recommendations with some flimsy political excuses and expect the country to have confidence in you? It is a pity. Official Bado from Jolo. Good morning, TV3 New Day. This Akufado government is making the country very unsafe for us. They should remember that they won't remain in power forever. There's time for everything. So they should be very careful in how they bite and chew. Karma awaits everyone. A word to the wise is always enough. Say prosper, a croquery. Johnny, but why is nobody talking about the innocent Ghanaian citizens who were shot? who are shot at, maimed and crippled with blood over what we saw on TV. Mm. If this is the position of government in this matter, then he should forget about this hypocrisy and banning vigilantes whilst hiding his militia lawless men under the SWAT he's refusing to ban. We shall be responsible for our own safety, Mr. Mm. President. And the final one, Sami Boachia Samankesi, he says that, the fact is the Emil Shot Commission report has exposed Sam George bitterly and he should advise himself on how he used to do his politics. Okay, for more hashtag, for more for Nana, regards to Honorable Sintim Abuaji of STC. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have uh, two minutes, so I'll share one minute, one minute for you, gentlemen. Sorry about that. Mr. Easy, yeah. so you, do you know if your party has the, the, uh, the provisional re uh, register? No, but I doubt if we have, because okay. it cannot be given to the MPP uh, without getting it to uh, the NDC. Are you in bed and with the EC? No, we are not in bed. With the, you see, the EC is given the free hand to do and rightly so, constitutionally, to do its way. You remember mm. when the woman went there, she made certain comments of trying to merge certain smaller parties, mm. and mm. the president so said, told her in the face, that is not your duty. But, but why could the president have told her about uh, satisfying <laughs> the provisions of providing the register before the exhibition began? Good. That, that, that would be a good argument, because my colleague here said, you know, that the issue is right within three months, okay? Mm. He used the word compile. The process of compiling exhibition is meant for you to go and correct your name and okay. other defects in. It's a compiling process. Mm. You get it. And so if you're saying, you know, I agree, they should have waited for whatever before exhibition is done. But if the EC is seeing the process of exhibition as part of the compilation mm. processes, okay, to authenticate that Johnny Hughes, the spellings of your names are right. The date of birth, everything is mm. correct therein. Then, you know, allow but, but them to finish you're compiling, you're compiling, with, you're compiling with me. Yes. And you have the document. I don't yes. have anything to re refer to. That's, <laughs> no, a, that's unfair no, compilation. No, 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 exhibition. Yeah. Exhibition is put at the place. Go there and go through. But I also, need, I also, need, I also need to have a copy Good. of the provisional Good. document <laughs> to be able to cross-check no, what no, you say you are exhibiting. I agree that. That is where I agree the EC should have waited to finish with whatever preliminary thing they should have done before the exhibition is done and then met the three months uh period okay of whatever great thank okay. you so, so the proper thing should have been all parties given either soft copies or hard copies of the register before exhibition how, how do you marry that with what your general secretary has said that he has a copy of the, uh, the of the on the I told you, I told you, I'm not clued. That's the that, that's the general know, secretary speaking. You know, information that we do have, and I cannot believe that the MPP will have it, and other parties do not have Doc, it. Doc, take a bite. I, I cannot hold on for me. Let Doc okay. have a bite on I this think, one. Uh, first of all, my understanding is that the NDC has sued, and uh, this issue about what constitutes compilation, mm. I think, will be determined in court. Right. But moving forward, I believe that I mean we should move away from this archaic 
means of conducting elections where people have to come in. We are in a technological era. Mm. Why can't this thing be uploaded online? Such that if it is the case that mm. Ahmed Jinapur is not well spelled, there's a means that I can send it to whoever. I mean, they recruit them. But, but, but they're, 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 even the EC's website is, is as old that as is, what that is, that is where the last time they updated it. That is where the problem is, Johnny. So I think that. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. <laughs> but, but, but we need the, the Electoral Commission mm. needs to come up with means and measures of improving the system mm. and doing away with all these kinds of suspicions. Okay. In countries like the United States, people vote. E I mean, e voting. So, mm. why we have this system whereby there are too many human hands mm. involved, then these suspicions mm. become what? Especially become exacerbated. Yes, it becomes exacerbated. So, I think, I think, look, the NDC has a right to sue. Mm. I'm happy that they've gone to court and the court will rule on it, and all this kind of lack of clarity will be clarified mm. within the shortest possible time. Is the NDC allowing itself to, to be hit with a lot of bullets? Is it I wouldn't. I out? wouldn't say so in the sense that it's characteristic of opposition parties. You remember Charlotte Osei and what she went through with the NPP. <laughs> the opposition is always suspicious okay. of the electoral commission. Mm. But even then, I think look, the EC has the responsibility to ensure that we yeah. conduct free and fair elections, and okay. that is what is expected of. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Griffith. If I may, if I may, if I may Th thirty seconds. Babina says our time is up. If I may uh, react uh, very quickly. The register okay. ceases to be a provisional register after the exhibition. Yeah, right. Therefore, the EC has failed so to be the provisional of register. No, it's the process of it says <laughs> it shall. But, but if you are compiling, shall it give, <laughs> no, it's not a process of compilation. It says that the EC the shall give the provisional it. register. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now, as you are taking it through exhibition and names are being added, yeah. you are finalizing. So okay. we are going oh, through the provisions. What, what are you, what are you names demanding are in added. court? What are you names demanding in court? Are first of all, we are, first all, the most important names aspect that my Ghanaian must note okay. is that there are serious anomalies with the register. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's what you are... That's why yeah. serious. That's why we are asking for a rerun of the exhibition. Okay. You have a case where as many as about 5,000 names are not on the register, yet on the uh, at the polling station, How did you, you have know that? only you, because we have people who are we have the okay. we don't have it. We have Thank you. The, the register is there. But but but, but Mr. Griffith, I thought you said you didn't have, have the register. We don't have a copy of that, but we have agents on the ground. Okay. We were All we right. were compelled to deploy agents on the ground. Okay. Officer. Thank you. Uh, Doctor Albert Jinapo is a member. <laughs> I said he's a member. Sorry. Is <laughs> a member of uh, tv 3 said. Uh, Think tank, it is also a senior lecturer at the University of Education. Whatever, forgive me. I'm, I'm used to saying member of member of, forgive me. Uh, Mr. George, you see, is the national PRO or communications director of NADMO, and Mr. Osekwami Griffiths is also the uh, head of IT at NDC. Thank you very much. Thank you, and let me say.